Uh, today I'm going to talk about the intrauterine device evaluation by ultrasound. There are two types of intrauterine device uh, in the United States. Uh, one is copper containing, basically they're there to uh, make a hostile environment that uh, uh, implanted, uh, uh, prevent implantation of uh, less egg. The other one is uh, hormonal uh, releasing uh, um, IUD. Basically, the pr uh, predominant one is um, called Marina, M-I-R-E-N-A, IUD. They can be easily seen. They, uh, the copper one is easily seen. They see the echogenic line, straight line with rever reverberation and shadowing. Uh, However, the uh, the marina device, you can see the shadowing at the tip. So it's not very echogenic. It's just not much rever reverberation, uh, but still we should be able to see it. Normal location is should be. Uh, like this, a T-shaped uh, device with the stem. Here's the stem. Here's the arm. The stem positioned longitudinally along the endometrial canal, and the, the arms pointing towards the corneal on each side. And the proximal end, uh, uh, less than three millimeter from the fundal endometrium. So basically, here, basically, a T-shaped device has to be close to the distal tip of the uh, uterus towards the end. This one is way too inferiorly located. The distal tip should be near the tip here. This is actual view. So this is abnormally, abnormally low IUD device. However, this is the uterus. Here's the cervix. There is some a line that's not straight, a kind of curve with some reverberation. This is the normal position the string of the IUD. The string is to pull it out in, in case needed. It's supposed to live in the cervical canal and uh, may be seen through interventional examination so we can pull it out. Uh, th this one is too low. The, the T shape should be here. However, the arm is kind of perforating, uh, embedded in the myometrium, and the, and the stem is in the cervical canal, and the string will be even more out. Uh, Sometimes they could cause a problem. They perforate through the uterus and migrate into the pelvis. And this is the one that's uh, migrated to the left side. So it's better uh, identified on x-ray. Ultrasound sometimes cannot detect it. This is the one they used to exit through this hole, this white hole that bait later healed and, and then freely uh, locating in the peritoneal cavity and that irritating the, the adjacent anatomy. Uh, Sometimes the IUD doesn't work. For example, this one, probably the uh, marina type. Just a few echogenic lines. There's not much reverberation. Uh, there is still a gestational sac next to it. So the, uh, basically, you, s you can still get pregnancy with IUD. Some IUD is not T-shaped. They look like a, z a zigzag, like an S-shaped, more than one S-shaped loop. So on sagittal view, you can cut through that uh, loop. You can have multiple dots, one, two, three, four, five, and each one have a uh, shadow. They connect to each other in this plane, uh, like this case. In China, they use this kind of a ring-like uh, device of IUD. This is a new device called Escher device. They look at it in the basically a little string that plug the corneal and extending to the fallopian tube. They literally plug the uh, the axis of the sperm to meet the egg. This is a um, new device for permanent sterilization. Echogenic, not much shadowing. Some. Uh, this one shows a, a normal appearing uterus in a patient with IUD. Some IUD are difficult to visualize, like this case. Remember this case, because I'm going to have a corollary uh, to this case. Sometimes the IUD was uh, deployed, and the arm can punch into the wall. It's called embed 
embedment, so it's not the correct location. The T shape should be here. And now it's tilted and then embed. And then sometimes they turn 90 degree and poking through the myometrium. They literally come in, uh, embed into the myometrium. If they did not go through the serosa, that's not, uh, not called perforation. Uh, another case of embedment. MRI, you can see that the retroverted uterus, the IUD is in the uh, myometrium. And this one is a, a, mis a malposition of IUD in the lower uterine segment. It didn't really work well. Uh, that's probably the copper one. You see it in very dense. That uh, didn't work because there's a gestational sac right next to it. So, uh, but this gestational sac is not very uh, safe because it had a, a CT scan. So the CT radiation of this uh, structure uh, may not be uh, helpful for this fetus. Uh, otherwise, that's why we do, uh, before we do the CT scan of female patient, we have to ch ask for chance of uh, pregnancy. And then the people say that I have IUDs, so therefore don't worry about it, I won't be pregnant, but that could be. Uh, this 57-year-old uh, female patient present was uh, uh, History is last uh, a lost IUD string, no period for many years. So basically, uh, we did the ultrasound, uh, and then the ultrasound technologist said uh, said uh, IUD in place. Remember the other case that uh, the IUD, IUD can be difficult to identify, maybe that one, maybe there's shadowing, it's hard to tell, is that uh, adenomyosis, or sh you don't know whether the shadowing from the um, uterine abnormality or the IUD. So anyway, the uh, technologist said the uh, IUD in place, and we reported IUD in place, and it turned out that patient uh, went to uh, underwent a procedure uh, to retrieve the IUD and then couldn't find it, and the patient was upset because she went through a procedure uh, for nothing. And uh, so sometimes a medical error occurs. Uh, and both the uh, ultrasound technologists and the radiologists should be more diligent on the appearance of IUD. When in doubt, uh, take an x-ray.